Greetings one and all, my name's Paul Carlin, I'm a drummer from Glasgow and this is my drum kit. So I've been playing drums for about 30 odd years, got my first kit in when I was 14 and I was getting drum lessons at school as part of my music classes, which was great. Shout out to my old drum teacher, Mr. McDonald, um, who taught me a lot of stuff. I played in bands all through my youth and into my 20s, and then in uh, my late 20s, I joined a band called Dan and Anna Ackroyd. We had some okay success. I played some other bands like American Men, um, and I'm now playing in a band called Jutland Songs. This is our rehearsal space. We share it with a bunch of other bands, uh, but this gives you a good example of what a lot of rehearsal space is like. This one's in the East End of Glasgow um, in a big warehouse, and you, can, you might be able to hear some other bands playing in rooms around me. This is my drum kit. Uh, it's a Gretsch Catalina Club. There are a multitude of kits available to you. Some are very cheap, some are very expensive. Uh, I started out with an absolute banger of a kit, um, which was extremely cheap, but it's how I learned to play. And uh, to be honest, if you're a good drummer, you can make any kit sound good. Um, so this one I bought second hand, um, I have a wee guy in Edinburgh. Um, obviously you'll see some symbols here as well. I'll walk you through the kit and tell you what each thing does. Um, as you can see, this is a little bit of wear and tear because I'm a drummer and I play it quite a lot. So right, we'll start with the kick drum. So this is the kick drum and that's a kick pedal here. So you might recognise that as, you know, it's basically the basis of all drums. Um, really, very, very rarely will you ever see a drum kit without a kick drum on it. Next up is the snare drum, which is this drum that sits just kind of right between your knees here. It's got quite a kind of a rattly sound to it. Um, as you can see, the head for mine has been quite well worn. It probably needs to change soon. Uh, drum heads are quite expensive, uh, but you can get a lot of life out of them if you treat them well. Um, this uh, snare drum I've got, uh, I bought a few years ago. It's a Tama, it's very, very nice. Um, these two are your toms or tom toms. Uh, rack tom, floor tom. Why is it called the floor tom? Because it sits in the floor. Why is it called the rack tom? because it's on a rack. Uh, next up, hi-hats. Um, so, uh, hi-hats are, you use, use a, a pedal like this to kind of put the, the thing up and down. There's a clamp here to make the distance between the hats a bit higher. Um, I mean, they look a bit like hats, I suppose. Um, you'll use hi-hats frequently playing drums. Uh, I've got three different symbols. Uh, first up is the ride symbol. So that's more used for sort of rhythm rather than accents. Your accents are on your crash cymbals. I've got two here. As you can tell, they sound different. Um, this is known as a dark crash. It's a wee bit heavier. Um, this is a big old, it's called a crash ride. You could play it as a ride, but the reason that I go for cymbals like that is because they are loud. Um, and when you're playing rock music, that is kind of what you want. An essential part of any drummer's life is your drum stool. Some people call it a drum throne. I call it a drum stool. This is mine. It's red. It's very comfortable. Um, it's extendable height. It is the one of the key points of um, of being comfortable behind the drum kit. Uh, my first stool was like that wooden thing behind it. Basically one of those. Um, don't recommend it. And then you've got your kick pedal here, which you used to uh, use the bass drum. So that's really a very, very basic walk around the kit, but there are some other things that are kind of quite important, notably drumsticks and earplugs. This is the most important thing I can say to you. I cannot stress this enough, protect your hearing. I've got earplugs here, which are molded to my ears. You can buy foam earplugs for pennies. You can buy ear defenders, some people use cotton wool. Uh, invest in protection for your ears because while you can replace anything you see here, you can buy a new head, you can buy new cymbals, you can certainly buy new sticks. You can't buy new ears. Uh, tinnitus is horrible. I know a lot of people with it, a lot of musicians have it. Tinnitus is a ringing in your ears. 
um, that you get when you've been exposed to uh, really loud frequencies and volumes. So if you're learning to play drums, please protect your hearing. I'm grateful I did. Um, that investing in these wee molded earplugs was the best investment I've ever made, even better than anything you see behind me. Uh, let's talk about sticks. Um, there are a myriad of different brands available. Um, the brand I use is Promark because they are the ones I've just been playing with for many years. They come in different kind of woods. So these are hickory, these two here. I think these are oak. Yeah, these are shirakashi oak, these ones on the left here. Um, oak sticks tend to be a bit more durable. Then hickory, you can get sticks in maple. Uh, there's some kind of uh, a carbon fiber sort of plastic sticks on the market as well. Um, a lot of people use those. Um, you'll find the ones you like eventually. So setting up a kit is like the princess in the pea for me. I can never get it perfect. And there'll be times during the gigs where my hi-hat is moving away from me or the kick drum moves or you'd realize that your cymbals are just not quite right. So I think it's really important that a drummer takes their time to get everything set up in a way that's comfortable. Um, again, if you're a right-handed drummer like me, that's fine. This will make sense. If you're left-handed, flip it, I would say. Um, you might see different types of kit. For example, the kick drum that I've got, the one we looked at first, it's a it's an extra two inches on it, so it's a lot bigger than a standard size kit, which means that I don't have as much room to maneuver things like my rag tom um, and my snare drum. So that's just something that as a drummer you have to make concessions for. Um, the great thing about everything I have in front of me is that everything's adjustable. You know, if I want to put this symbol a bit higher up, I can. Um, if I want to angle this rack tom to be a bit flatter, I can. Uh, again, we've talked about the clamp on the hi-hat, um, but getting comfortable is absolutely crucial because you just, you can't play if you're not comfortable. Take it from me, I've had bad gigs because um, I haven't had time to get the floor tom to just the right height. Um, for me, generally, I try to keep my, my stool quite low, um, or just to give me a bit more kind of I feel like I've got more kind of power behind what I'm doing. I feel like I can kind of survey the kit a little bit better. Um, so comfort is everything. Um, hearing protection is everything. Uh, don't worry about having great gear from the start. You know, I started with a kit that had two rack toms or attached to the snare drum. I had one cymbal, a hi-hat snare drum, and it sounded like, you know, it wasn't a very good sounding drum kit, but there's something to say, I, I do think this, I think when you're playing with restrictions, you do potentially become a better drummer because you're, I don't know, maybe you've got to be more creative in what you do. Um, everyone plays drums differently in terms of how you hold the sticks. So uh, I play like a rock drummer. So for me, I, I hold the sticks um, like this in my hand and you've got a little bit of give and go. So you're sort of between your forefinger and your thumb. Um, and then you can use your, the palm, the base of the palm of your hand to um, get a wee bit of leverage, like, like that. Um, you might see some jazz drummers who play sort of side off like this, um, military style drumming as well. You see quite a lot of that. Um, also, some people use brushes, which is a, you know, it's a, like a metal or a plastic brush, which gives a kind of softer um, attack on the drums. Um, Mallets can work quite nice in drums, you know, use a mallet on a, a cymbal, you can get a nice sort of shimmery sound. Um, so, plenty of other drummers out there, uh, social media and, and YouTube are full of excellent drumming masterclasses from drummers far better than me. Um, for me, I got into drums through Nirvana, Dave Grohl, who was in Foo Fighters 2, was, was my guy. Um, I just was obsessed with the way he played, really heavy hitting. Big personality, he had long hair, he looked really cool, but he could back it up with some really good chops. Um, although my teacher was a jazz drummer, so he taught me how to sort of add little flourishes of sort of finesse um, to back up sort of hitting, hitting hard. And the band I played in for years, Dan and Anacroid, for a time we had two drummers, and uh, John Bailey Jr., who's an outstanding drummer, uh, he and I had quite different styles and we would sort of um, trade off uh, sort of flashpoints. Generally, I was the sort of um, the, the bones of it and John was 
filling in the gaps and adding flourishes of of hugely impressive fills and stuff. So that was a, a kind of marriage that did quite well in terms of playing drums. Some of my favourite drummers are Dave Grohl, as I mentioned, uh, Janet Weiss, who plays drums in the band Quasi. She was also in a band called Slater Kenny, uh, Andrew Scott from Sloan, John Verster from uh, Super Chunk and the Bob Mould Band, Brendan Canty from Fugazi. Um, there are plenty, yeah, you, you'll find the ones you like. I like to steal little bits of all of their styles, Janet Weiss especially. She has this really, she's just in the pocket, as they call it. Um, fantastic drummer, I love the way she plays. And I've just nicked bits of different drums over the years and, and kind of developed them into the way I play drums. I don't really have a style, I just like playing drums. I like indie rock. Um, and I think that's why I'm still playing drums 30 years later. One of the reasons why I still love playing drums after all these years is the emotional and physical release that it brings. If you've had a rotten day at work, if you've had a rotten day at university, college, school, just a rotten day in general, whacking um, the living daylights out of a drum kit can be a very cathartic experience and not just the actual physical act of it. There's something about playing music that is uh, certainly releases happiness hormones in me, um, makes me feel a lot better, makes me feel just uh, you, you, all the stress of that day is gone. Hanging with your friends, um, playing music is a truly great thing. Um, so uh, from that sense, I recommend playing drums enormously. I hope this has given you some kind of inspiration to pick up a pair of sticks, put in some earplugs, find a drum kit. I mean, I learned playing with knitting needles on pillows in my mum and dad's bedroom when I was a kid, and then I elevated to pots and pans. Um, so even if you've got knitting needles and pillows, you can still bash out a rhythm. Um, good luck. Right, I need to break this kit down and put it away. It's going to take me about four to five hours to do that. Only joking, it'll only take about three. Thanks for watching. Folks, it's not all glamorous. The loadout ain't fun. <laughs>